Hi, and welcome to today's video. We are going to be making a baby shower cake with ruffles on the bottom tier. And as you can see, I've got a 10 inch strawberry cake here and I am pushing it to the back side of my cake board because later on I am going to be adding some fondant pieces to the front of the cake and I really need that extra space up front. And now I'm just putting a buttercream filling. They did not want a fruit filling on this cake, so it's just a simple traditional buttercream. And then I'm gonna place my other 10 inch round strawberry cake on top of that. And then I'm just gonna do a simple crumb coat. I am going to be going back and adding some pale pink ruffles to this cake. So I'm just doing a crumb coat of the white buttercream just to seal it in nice before I add those ruffles. And I also wanted to point out I did not level this cake with an actual level. Normally I would do that, especially on a wedding cake or a large cake. And as you can see here, as I'm scraping it, I just step back and look at it and I'm kind of eyeballing the levelness of it. And then you'll see later when I go to stack that second tier that I do have to make an adjustment. So sometimes it is better to go ahead, get your level out and really check that instead of trying to save time like I did and then have to go back and fix it later. I will also have all the tools you see me using in this video linked up in the description of the video. This is the Cake Safe Acrylic Scraper. I absolutely love this scraper. It is perfect for all size cakes and it just does a really nice clean job. And that's a fondant smoother I'm using there over the Viva paper towels to smooth out all those little flyaway pieces from my cake. Now I'm just using some small plastic dowels. I ordered these off Amazon and I will link those up as well at the end. That's what I'm using to hold the top tier in place along with the larger plastic dowels you see me cutting there. And I'm actually using a pipe cutter tool um, that you can find at any local Lowe's or Home Depot or something along those lines. That's really good. Um, for any heavy cakes, because this is the 10 inch round and I'm placing an eight inch round on top, I wanted to have a little bit of extra support. If you were just going to be placing a six inch round on top, I think using all of the skinnier dowels would be perfectly fine. So this is an eight inch round strawberry cake. And again, the buttercream filling is what they wanted. So I'm just gonna stack that, pull off any little crumbs or cut off pieces. And I'm eyeballing it yet again. And then this one is going to be iced in a gray, like a really pale gray buttercream icing. And it's going to be smooth. So I am going to put a thicker coat of icing on this and then go back and smooth it out with that same cake scraper, but also with the paper towels and the fondant smoother once again to really give me a nice smooth finish on that buttercream cake. So here I'm adding a little bit of icing on the cake dowels of a larger cake to go and stack the top tier. That just acts as a little bit of glue. And then I use my cake spatula just to kind of move it around. I did touch the back of the cake there slightly. If you do leave a few fingerprints, just make sure that you get that Viva paper towel as soon as possible and smooth those back out. You can also chill your cake separately for about 20 to 30 minutes to really make the buttercream a little sturdier. And that also makes it a little easier to stack. And now I'm using a Viva paper towel again just to go over all the little details. And this is when I notice, hey, this is not level. So I lifted it back up with that cake spatula and just piped a little bit of buttercream underneath there. If your cake is just slightly off like mine was, this will usually fix the problem. Of course, if it's very, very unlevel, then you need to unstack it 
and remeasure your dowels before placing that top tier back on. So I'm just going back, I'm smoothing out those little imperfections. And once I do this, I can hammer through a cake skewer into the top of both tiers. And I'm sorry, that's not in the video on this one, but you can, you can get the little wooden skewers that you would buy at any grocery store to make kebabs with and hammer it do down through both tiers to really secure those together. Now here you see me doing the ruffle. So I am using a large petal tip. You don't need a coupler for this and I will attach the, the uh, link to buy this also in the notes at the end. But what I'm doing is I'm not making a row of ruffles. I'm not doing row upon row upon row where it looks perfect. I'm doing them every different direction, different lengths, because I want it to look more like you've just scrunched up the material and stuck it on the side of the cake. I don't want it to look perfectly ruffled like you would see like at a pedophore dress or something along those lines. So this is one of my favorite styles to use. It's super girly, but also a little bit different. I think it looks a very much like material when you don't make it super perfect on your ruffles. And then I go back with one last row of ruffles right around that top edge to clean up any imperfections I might have had. Because I smoothed out the top of that bottom tier with smooth pink icing, I don't have to continue with my ruffles up into the base of the top tier. Because as you can see here, I'm adding a really thin gray fondant border, like a ribbon border, to the base of that top tier. And I'm going to place a fondant gray bow that I made the day before so it's nice and set up and dried. I'm attaching it with just a little bit of water and pressing that into the buttercream so that it sits nice and tight against that top cake. Now I'm brushing the powdered sugar off the back of the little baby shoes that I made a couple of days before this cake was put together and I just set them on top. I'm actually just using a little bit of buttercream and another petal tip, the smallest of the petal tips. I think it's a 101, just to add a little ruffle to the back of those shoes. And then I went back with just a drop flower with buttercream and just piped a few flowers around in the pale pink to add a little bit of design to that top tier. And I'm just putting a little white center on the end inside of each of those drop flowers on the side. So there are the little blocks that I made, the little building blocks in gray, and I just wrote the child's name on there. And I hope you enjoyed this cake. It was so fun to make. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.